Hi guys, welcome to our very first Q&A session here on Esoteric Atlanta. If this is your first time here on this channel, perhaps this is the first video that you're clicking up ours and you're like, who the hell is this girl and why do I want to hear her answers to some questions? I totally understand. We do have other videos where I do talk about other things that do not involve me. You might want to check those out instead. But for everybody else, let's get started. If you sent in a question or asked a question and I don't answer it, it's probably because I didn't see it. So just make sure you ask it again and I'll save it for the next Q&A we do. So Blue Skies asked, has there been a story that really stuck with you or a discovery that was particularly troubling? And have you had a story you expected to be pretty basic but turned into a mushroom cloud of information? Yes to both. I know you mentioned the Nephilim for you and that was one that was big for me as well. To be completely honest with you guys, I was not really interested in doing a story about the giants. I was, which is the Nephilim, um, I was familiar with the Nephilim. I had listened to some podcasts before and I'd heard some other people talk about it before, but it just wasn't a subject that I was super excited about researching. The only reason why I did research the Nephilim is because I had so many people request it. And so I kind of like ho-hum went about it and was like, all right, I'll just, I'm just gonna do this because a lot of people wanna watch it and you guys are my people. So I started digging and I was blown away. It was incredible the amount of information. My opinion on the Nephilim and the giant absolutely changed. I find it completely fascinating. And what really got me was that there are giants that are in stasis, which allegedly means that we have giants or Nephilim still here on the earth that are kind of like in a coma or under anesthesia, they, they're still alive. And so with the Nephilim, I actually ended up doing a two-part series on this story because there was just so much information. And I got really heated because I realized I mean, I think we all know that there's a lot that's hidden from us. Um, obviously, you wouldn't be on this channel watching these stories if you thought everything was out in the open for everybody. So uh, we all know that, but I was blown away by how much like the Smithsonian had hidden from the general public to try to maintain a particular narrative that the evidence of giants disputes and disproves. It was also really cool because there was so much there with the giants that I ended up every Tuesday, most of you guys know that every Tuesday I go on David's show and that's a great opportunity to really have dialogue about these topics because as you know from my stories, my videos, my shows, it's me basically delivering the information I found in the form of storytelling where on David's show we can have a conversation and really talk about all the evidence and everything we think might be going on. And of course, David brings on other guests too, like Jessie, she's awesome. And so she has a lot of insight as well from her childhood. So she's able to kind of answer some lingering questions we might have or give us some guidance um, as to, to what the truth might actually be. And what was also cool about the Giants is I got I woke up one morning and I got a text from David and he sent me to a website where an, another website, some people I don't know, had found my videos on the Giants and had played them um, because of the research that I had I'd found regarding the Nephilim. And that was really cool. That was really validating. And for the people who did that, like, thank you, because that really was awesome. I also was really, really, really disturbed by Somerset Belanoff. And to be honest with you guys, like I was already disturbed by her before I made the video on her. And her video is my most watched, most popular video. Now, both my Somerset video and my two Giants videos, I have privated um, as of now because of all the shenanigans going on in the world. I do plan on making them public again in the next couple of months. However, I have sent those videos over to David to put on his website where it's more of his control. So if you guys have not seen those videos or you wanna see those videos again, go over to David's website because they should be up there. If you can't find them or you really wanna have your own copy of the videos because of the information, just send me an email and I'll send you the video myself. But again, with Somerset Belanoff, you know, her alleged activity, allegedly what she does to people, um, the fact that she is so mysterious and there's really only like one picture of her out there 
was really disconcerting, but what really grossed me out the most with all of her alleged stories is that I am related to her. We have a common ancestor. Our common ancestor is Queen Victoria. So this is somebody that I am genetically connected to that allegedly from my opinion, from what I see of the research, she's, she's a pretty evil girl. So I hope that answered your question on that. All right, so the next question I got was from Natalie LeBlanc. And she asked, where can we find the removed books of the Bible? So this, I'm assuming, Natalie, that you do follow us on David's channel as well, because we do talk about, or at least I bring that up a lot, because a lot of my research does point back to some of the books that were taken out of the Bible. Um, there are some books available, some Bibles that are available that include all of the books that um, David actually found some that you can just Google and see if you can find a complete copy of the Bible with the 45 books that were taken out of the Bible. Uh, there's also an app. Uh, David texted me this morning with a link to an app that has all of the books. I'm going to download the app myself. As far as my preference on which copy or which edition, I don't have one yet um, because when I research, I try, especially when I'm researching an old text like the Bible or like other um, texts that are thousands of years old and have been translated multiple times, I do try to look at all sorts of different uh, variations because things do get lost in translation. And so for research purposes, I like to see every single translation I can possibly get on a particular verse, just so I can see if there's any differences or if there is different translations that maybe allude to a different outcome of a verse, if that makes sense. Um, but you can find it if you just do a quick Google search. Um, for those that don't know what we're talking about, uh, week after next, we are gonna start to go through on David's channel all the books that were taken out of the Bible that first happened at the Council of Nicaea in 321 um, AD with Constantine. Um, we can call that censorship, uh, fact checking, if you will. There's obviously a lot that is there that um, they didn't want us to know. And so we are gonna try to dig through that. Again, I'm not a minister. I've never been to seminary school. I'm just someone that really likes to learn. So Natalie, make sure you join us when we start to go through these books and maybe over time, the group of us can kind of figure out what the best translation is. The good thing about from what I'm assuming, from what I've seen, the good thing about the books of the Bible that were removed from the Bible is that they haven't been as heavily translated as much as the approved version of the Bible. Um, as you know, the, the approved version of the Bible that we all grew up with has been translated so many times, right? From the King James Version all the way through the different generations of people retranslating it. And so I, I do fear sometimes that that there are things that are kind of lost, but from the ones that have been removed, I, I, I'm, it looks like they haven't been tampered with as much. So that's kind of exciting because now we're looking at something that was closer to what was actually written, if that makes sense. And I did notice that somebody asked on David's channel if we could do an episode regarding the original Christians over like what holidays we should be celebrating as far as like the Jewish traditional holidays like Passover, Hanukkah. Um, I did see that and I I would love to eventually do, some, do a breakdown like that. Um, I don't feel like I have the enough information as myself to really know which holidays are relevant to the pure Christian faith. And I'm hoping as time goes on, as we do go through the complete Bible, that we'll have some of those answers, those lingering uh, questions answered for us. Okay, so Jay Martin asks, what are your favorite books and what edition of the Bible do I prefer? So we'll start with the Bible. Um, I grew up with the NIV Bible, so that's the Bible that I typically use in my own personal life. That's the Bible I have beside my bed right now is the NIV Bible, just because it's my creature of comfort. Again, the Presbyterian Church, that is what we use. Those were the Bibles we had in my house growing up as well was always the NIV. I think we had like one King James version of the Bible. Um, now, when I sit down to do research for a story or for David's channel, 
like I said earlier, I typically will go online and I will look up a verse and I will look it up in every single translation from the King James Version through all of them just to kind of see if they're all saying the same thing or if there's anything different in one translation that paints a different picture, if that makes sense. But for my own personal use, I use the NIV mostly. And when you ask for my favorite book, I don't know if you're referring to a book in the Bible. I don't really have a favorite book in the Bible. I'm loving the book of Enoch, um, which we've talked about a lot because it answers a lot of questions. And my favorite biblical character besides Jesus would probably be Paul because he's kind of a badass. But you might have meant my favorite book, just like entertainment reading. And it's funny, um, so all the books behind me are all books that we use for like academic purposes. So philosophy, yoga, um, all sorts of different historical um, references are behind me in this bookshelf. But for my fun reading, like the reading I do just to clear my mind, I always like murder mysteries and suspense. And so right now I am actually reading the Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I love her books. She writes very suspenseful books. They're pretty easy reads too. And um, every night I have a, a habit, every single night I take a hot bath before I go to bed. I, I exercise a lot. Um, and so I always like to use Epsom salts, which this is, I always use the Dr. Teal brand and this is the um, Soak and sleep with lavender, it smells really good. So it kind of relaxes you and the magnesium helps for people who exercise a lot, it helps for your muscles. And so I will sit in the bath and like read for an hour every night. That's just really how I chill out and calm down and kind of relax my mind before I go to bed. So yeah, anything by Ruth Ware, if you like suspense and true crime, not true crime, she writes fictional crime, but any type of that kind of stuff, she's your girl. Now, speaking of the books behind me, I have had a lot of people ask about like the feathers and all the stuff we have on the walls here, asking if it was symbology for something. No, it, it's not. I understand when you're starting to learn about symbology and like French society and secret societies, you might see something and think, oh my God, that's that's not, that's a, 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 a satanic thing or something, and that's not the case at all. Um, the book, again, the book behind, the books behind us are all books for academic purposes. Um, pictures, that's my family pictures. We've got my boyfriend's parents' picture up here. I've got my three times great grandfather's picture here. All this stuff over here. So the feathers you see, um, our dog, uh, our dog Ravi, R A V I, he is a rescue from India, a street dog, and we take him up to the mountains a lot to let him run. Um, he needs a lot of exercise. And so, all these feathers are feathers. We have a lot of them up and down this bookshelf are feathers that he's found in, in the woods, in the mountains, and have brought to us. And so, we've saved them all. And my boyfriend, uh, he owns a yoga shala here in Atlanta, and he is. That's what he does. He spent a lot of time in India like I did studying. Um, but he's also an artist. That's what he did before he ever went to India. He went to school for art. And so a lot of the artwork we have in our house is his artwork. And so he picks up, he'll pick up a lot of like knickknacks around the world and save them. And so a lot of the stuff you see here is just, um, it's just from the mind of an artist, which he is a very, very, very talented visual artist. All right, I got a couple of questions anonymously sent to me. The person didn't want me to say their name on um, on the video, so I will respect that. So the first question was, what is my favorite movie and or my favorite TV show? So I'm a typical girl. My favorite movie of all time is simply Ballroom. I freaking love it. I've never done ballroom dancing, but every time I watch it, I just want to go like ballroom dance and it is a great movie if you have not seen it. It's from the 90s. It takes place in Australia. It is fantastic. So if you haven't seen it yet or if you're still in an area that's pretty locked down and you need something to do, rent Simply Ballroom. It's a great movie. I also love Muriel's Wedding, which again is another movie that takes place in Australia. Um, when I was a kid, my favorite movie growing up was the 1968, I believe it was 1968, version of Oliver. Um, that was my favorite movie as a kid and it's still, again, one of my all-time favorite movies. My favorite TV show, I really, really, really like trashy reality TV show. 
that is another way for me to just turn off the world when I just need to make like my mind just needs a break. I will watch all I watch almost all the Real Housewives franchises. Um, Salt Lake City, the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City started a couple of nights ago and oh my gosh, that that show was fantastic. Talk about some drama from the Salt Lake City ladies. I also love the New York cast and I love the Beverly Hills cast. I used to watch Atlanta because I live in Atlanta, but I got off on the Atlanta schedule one time when I was in India and I just never caught back up again. Um, I love Vanderpump Rules. I don't know if they're coming back. Obviously, I love um, Southern Charm that takes place in Charleston, South Carolina, which is where my mom's family is from. So I definitely, reading murder mysteries and watching trashy reality TV is definitely how I chill out and how I relax. So the last question or two questions from the same person who again wanted to remain anonymous was how do I research and how do I schedule my day? And so I'm assuming the scheduling of my day involves my filming schedule and how to, how I set that up. And it, it did, if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel, um, it does take a while to figure out how you need to schedule yourself because you are basically working for yourself. Um, how do I research? We'll start with that. It depends on the topic. Usually um, I will just do a quick Google search to see what comes up first and foremost. Then I'll go and I'll also check out YouTube and some podcasts to see if I can find any like historians or um, people who specialize in the field to see if they have any information out. I also like to look through college papers and thesis people may have, have written on a topic. I found a lot of information with the giants that way. Um, I also, while I'm researching, if something interesting is said in the research, I'll write it down and then I'll do a deep dive on that as well to help me to connect more dots. I rarely, rarely, rarely will use something like Wikipedia, um, only because Wikipedia, if anybody can come in there and change it anytime they want. And sometimes you can, you can be, there's some subjects that are pretty safe with Wikipedia when it's a pretty benign basic subject. But when you're looking at French stuff, I would never use Wikipedia at all. So it's really just kind of like, for me, research is just kind of digging around on the internet until I hit something that seems right and can connect the dots to other things as well. And again, like with the Bible, I will double check everything to make sure it's not just one source that's saying something, that there are multiple things to back it up. And as far as scheduling my day with filming and stuff, I'll just kind of walk you through, you know, our main job, the main source of income that we have that supports our family, my boyfriend, me and our dog here is our yoga shala. So that's, that always comes first. Um, as far as our week and um, I do teach a couple of classes there and I do run some 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 um, course series there. Uh, so I, I, I'm not just here all day filming. But um, usually we get up around four o'clock in the morning. Uh, my boyfriend opens up the business at 5 a.m. And so even though most days I'm here in the morning and he's there if I'm not teaching, I will get up and sometimes I will go ahead and start working at four. Um, I usually will exercise, either do my yoga practice or um, a bar class or something online around like 6 a.m. And I usually will exercise for a good hour to two hours every morning. I'm a very, 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 very heavy exerciser. Um, and so I will do that in the morning to get me my blood pumping and kind of get my mind to wake up and also get my mouth to wake up. I know that sounds weird, but the breathing and all that kind of stuff loosens up your, your jaw to be able to talk into a camera. And then I'll shower. Usually he comes home in the morning and he'll do his practice or workout while I'm finishing getting ready. And some days all I'm doing is researching all day, like literally sitting at the desk and just on the computer researching all day. Um, other days I'm filming all day. You might notice that some of the videos I'm in the same outfit it's because I've, I'm filming multiple days on Tuesdays I film with David so usually David and I will film around 11 a.m. Um, and then he I think releases it later that night um, I do work on the weekends I, I just because I like what I do and so um, I try to release videos on Monday Wednesday and Friday 
Um, if I can't do that, then I'll at least try to get like Monday and Thursday if I'm just heavy in research and I'm not ready to put together a story yet. If that's something you guys are really interested in and you, and you wanna know what it takes to run a YouTube channel that involves a lot of research, I can, we do have a um, playlist on this channel, which I'm gonna add this video to called Behind the Scenes. And so I can start to kind of film a little bit behind the scenes if that's something that maybe you guys are interested in. If, it, if you're interested in opening up a YouTube channel or a podcast and you wanna um, kind of see how other people do it because it is overwhelming at first. Like when you first sit down to open up a YouTube channel, it's super overwhelming, but then you do get the hang of it. All right guys, that's it. Um, that might have been super boring for you. I don't know. Again, if you're new to this channel, most of the shows that I do are storytelling about some interesting topic. They're not about me. So if you're like, again, who the hell is this girl and why do I care about her schedule? Um, more videos down below. Just hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Again, if you want to join our Patreon, there's a link to that too. I noticed we have a couple more Patreons that joined our videos for this upcoming week have already been edited. So your name will be added next week to the end roll. And I thank you so much. If you um, have a story you want me to cover, please send me that in email for those who have emailed me and I have not responded. Just be patient. We've been traveling and of course there's weird stuff going on right now. So I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you again for all the love and all the support. We're all in this together. As Ram Dass used to say, we're all just walking each other home. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.